I think it's quite useful to, to look at thinking um, as a kind of a drug or as an addiction. And we're, we're addicted to thought and we're afraid if we don't, we don't think we'll just disappear. Um, so the, you know, this is why it's a uh, difficulty about meditation so much, not a sort of lack of technique, but uh, the willingness to apply it. But if we look at, at thinking as, as an addiction, then uh, I think we can also compare it with the different strategies people have for, uh, for abandoning addictions. Um, let's compare it, say, with, with smoking. Now, one way of giving up smoking is just to say, right, from, from today I'm never going to smoke another cigarette. Okay? Uh, and some people can do that, some people can't. But another uh, strategy that some people use is, um, say, smoking 20 cigarettes today, and tomorrow I'm going to smoke 19 and 18. You just gradually reduce the number from 20 to zero so that you don't have this sudden jolt and the sort of cold turkey experience. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this can be applied to meditation, that if you take a, a, a meditation object such as the breath, or a, a meditation word, maybe used in conjunction with the breath, like butto, then it's like giving up cigarettes all at one go. Uh, you're not giving any space at all to the thinking mind at all. Whereas sometimes the, the power, the momentum of, of thought is so strong, it's basically the mind wants to think, you know, it needs to think at this sort of time. Um, and using that, that first technique of the uh, of, of breath uh, can be frustrating um, and not very successful. So what can you do? You use a meditation technique which employs thinking. Um, so the, the only um, thing to bear in mind here is you have to think systematically. You have to follow a, a train of thought. It doesn't mean thinking this, thinking that basically on a subject of Dhamma um, because the mind um, will, will not become clear and calm in that way. But if, you, if you're taking the uh, 32 parts of the body or the first five parts of the body, hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth and skin, and investigating them uh, one by one, considering them in terms of impermanence, or unattractiveness, not self, uh, for instance, and allowing the mind to think and to imagine and to uh, to expand upon those those themes one by one, or um, taking the subject of, of death, um, the the fact of the inevitability of our death, the uncertainty of, of the time or the particular cause uh, cause of death, and so on. These um, kinds of discursive meditations. Um, can allow us to gradually reduce uh, our addiction to thinking. And if you follow one of these uh, meditations through in that kind of systematic way, and sometimes before beginning this kind of meditation, you can maybe write down a few points, you know, point one, point two, point three, point four, um, and, and to do it in a bit of an artificial way until after a certain amount of practice should become uh, fluent at it and you don't have to think in that way. Then you reach a certain point where it's as if the mind just gets bored of thinking. It's just like the thinking's a heavy weight and you just, I don't want this anymore. And you just put down the burden of thought and then the mind can go to the non-discursive objects such as the breath in a very complete, enthusiastic, committed kind of way. So. Um, dealing with the addiction of thought by cutting it off right at the beginning, by turning the mind to, uh, to the breath or some physical sensation or some word or some concept, um, or else using discursive thought in a very systematic step-by-step uh, -step manner until the mind puts down thinking um, with a sigh of relief.